Hello and welcome back. If you saw the end of year special, uh, 2021 end of year special, you would have seen this Singer Futura I talked a little bit about. And I mentioned that I had uh, about four of these machines in various states of uh, disrepair, if you like. I've not assessed them at all, uh, but it actually turns out I've got six, uh, seven, including this one here. So yeah, slightly underestimated it there. <laughs> so the plan is today to go through and assess some of these machines. Now this is probably the better one that I've got out of the whole lot by looking just visually uh, checking over them. You know, I haven't really done any uh, in-depth tests, as I say. Uh, I've actually tried this machine and it's it's working, although I had it plugged in the other day and it made started making a funny hissing sound. And I think that might be a capacitor starting to fail uh, down in here. Now, I'm not all that familiar with these machines, but um, I'm going to go through and uh, have a look for that capacitor, see if it is a capacitor that's causing that issue. And also there's a problem with a couple of these buttons here. They don't respond very well. We've got to push them very hard to make them activate. So that's the straight stitch and the reverse stitch here. And also what I'd like to do if I get time is maybe just quickly bring each machine that I've got onto the bench, have a quick assessment, see what we've got, and then um, maybe I'll do other videos on those as we go. So let's take a wee look at this one here a little bit closer. Let's just have a close look here. Model 1000. So Singer Futura 1000 model. And yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit dirty. It's not too bad. Uh, the first thing I do when I get a, a Singer machine like this is I always check the capacitor and the foot controller. Now I've done a video on how to open the, these clamshell foot controllers and replace the capacitor in it. I'll link it in up here somewhere and down below in the description. I'll go ahead and plug the machine in. Normally I wouldn't do this if I've heard that sort of sizzling sound. I normally wouldn't plug it back in. I would just go and... Uh, you know look for that potential faulty capacitor but I thought I'd plug it in just to show you or just to, so you can hear it possibly it, it took a little while to appear that that sound so let's just uh, plug it in here turn it on power it on here Oops. cable wasn't quite plugged in I wonder if it was just the cable not quite making connection when it was making that funny sound. Anyway, I'll leave it on just in the meantime. Now the this one came with all the accessories, bits and pieces. I'll go through that in more detail. Probably uh, won't go through too much detail in this video here. Really just assessing the machines to see what we've got. Put that aside. This one uh, also got the manual here. Is that the full manual? Sewing applications. No, it's not the full manual. Not sure if I've got the manual, physical manual for this one. Yeah. So the needle bar is disengaged here. If I click here, yeah, that, that button's actually improving. It was very difficult to, to click that button. Yeah, there we go. Is that? Yeah, see this one? Yeah, that's your disengaged needle bar. Yeah, so they, these probably just need a bit of a clean up, the, the actual button contacts, I'm hoping. These buttons seem not too bad. That one's, oh yeah, that's no good. Yep. Just need a good firm press. So running okay there. Still can't hear any hissing, so that's, you know, something. Yeah, it was quite subtle. If we just have a wee look down here while we're... While we're waiting here, we've got a free arm machine here with a flatbed attachment here that just pulls out and slides down like that to give you free arm. Quite handy. This clips back into place there. Well, it's been on for a little while now and it's not making that hissing noise yet. I might just uh, pop in there and take a wee look at the capacitor in there if there is one. So let's uh, unplug the machine and have a look through the side here. Disconnect that 
there. So we'll probably just need to start by removing the bottom cover there. I just want to get that sorted so that you know I can actually use the machine. I uh, might do a basics video on this model as well so it'll be good to have a nice clean tidy machine that's working properly for that. So I've just got the two screws on the base here. Okay and we've got a couple of clips here. Sorry about the uh, cobwebs in here. These clips here just press down the top there. I'll try and do it without getting my hand in the way. See if I can yeah, just push that down like that and it comes forward, slides forward like that. And this pulls out this little clip here. Same with this one here. It's a little bit harder to get to that one. On an awkward angle here too. So push that, yeah, and slide that. Just like that there. And that it just allows this piece here to come away. That little cover there. Side cover. Is there a capacitor in here? I'm not too sure. I'm almost tempted to believe this. I'm just not too sure exactly how much I need to take out here to get this apart to see whether there's a capacitor down in here somewhere. I think I'll leave that for another machine, you know, maybe one that's uh, not economical to repair or unrepairable and whatnot, and I can kind of just explore uh, that there. Yeah, without sort of using this as a test bed really. It's just something that I haven't really uh, done. I'm not that familiar with these machines to be honest, but I thought I'd show you the process anyway. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll put this machine aside and we'll take a look at another one, see what state that's in. Okay, so here's the next one. It's a bit dirty, sorry. As I say, I just dragged it straight out of storage. And th this is the sort of process I'll go through when I'm trying to, you know, uh, not hoard so many machines if I want to get rid of uh, machines or maybe just assess a bunch of machines keep one for good um, you know for the collection and then maybe if there are other good machines sell them off or give them away donate them to charities or you know op shops or you know thrift shops things like that so this one came with a foot controller here I'm not going to bother using this foot controller because I don't know what the capacitor is like in this one. I haven't assessed it. I'm not going to bother with that at this stage. I'll continue to use the foot controller that came with the original, you know, the first one that I checked out there. Okay, so this one, I have no idea what state this is in. It looks a bit rough. Model 1100, so 1100, made in West Germany. Yep, she's pretty grubby. Haven't given it a clean, sorry. I just thought I'd quickly plug it in and see where we're at with this one. Hopefully it doesn't blow up or something. That doesn't seem to fit. Ah, it's a, uh, that's interesting. It's actually a different controller. Yeah, the the 1100, that's the one for this one. And this controller here is the one for the one in behind. The first one I checked out, different controller. And you may have also noticed that the this one here says electronic on the foot controller here. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna take you know a bit of a gamble and, and just plug this in and, and go for it. So. Uh, if, the, if there is a capacitor in here, I'm just not too sure if there is. If there is one, I mean it could blow, create a bit of smoke and a bang and a bit of smell. But let's hope that doesn't happen. Go ahead and plug that in there. Oh, that doesn't sound good. So what's going on there? Let's have a listen. Oh yeah, it stopped. Oh, we've got life. Just remove that bobbin there so we don't get a tangle. Drop-in style, self-winding bobbin. You know, very similar to the Singer 700 series machines that I've done videos on. Quite a nice setup. A little bit rusty around here. 
but yeah that button's not working yeah so these none of these buttons are doing anything to select the different stitches there so there's there's a problem I mean that's probably why it was thrown out a lot of these machines are just tip material you know they've been picked up from a uh, recycle center or a tip or something like that but at least it it goes you know the motor sounds okay so I'll just take note of what I find with each of these machines as I go and uh, let's call this uh, machine number two I've got the one the first one there we'll call that machine number one this is machine number two and I'll just take some notes as I go oh this one here let's call this machine three quite yellow case is very yellowed yeah so is the base actually it's been sitting in the sun oh and look at the uh, labeling here Futura Electronic 2002 so a different model again here's a test, test piece of material so at this stage uh, all I'm really doing is just checking uh, you know the state of the buttons the electronics uh, and the motor does it drive this one here looks as though it's probably going to sew I'm not going to go through the sewing side of things at this stage to see whether the machines actually sew at this stage I'll leave that until after I've assessed you know the state of the electronics and things like that to see whether it's worthwhile going any further foot controllers by the way often live down in here uh, not on this model probably access from the top here yeah so the lid just opens there on the that's the uh, carry case there some of the earlier models you actually uh, access the foot controller from inside the case here it's got the foot controller here and that yeah that's the three prong version and no no uh, labeling referring to electronic here although this says electronic I think that's referring to electronically controlled uh, pattern stitches rather than electronically controlled speed when they're referring to an electronic machine it's kind of two facets to it really it's electronically controlled as I say and uh, speed electronically speed controlled so this one electronically controlled selection and electronically controlled zigzag mechanisms and reversing mechanisms things like that there's no there won't be any cams in here physical cams but the foot controller looks like a non-electronic type it's okay no strange noises there but we don't have any oh yeah got a light here might be hard to see on camera but yep we've got a light there yep again hard press and we get the lights coming up there uh, it's in reverse <laughs> it is threaded Uh, stuck in reverse by the look of that <laughs> yeah something going on there uh, good thing about this one though is it's, we've got uh, selection here that's working yep so as far as the buttons and the electronics are concerned here looks okay so we've got some sort of problem there where, where it's stuck in reverse whether that's an electromechanical issue or just an outright mechanical issue I'm not too sure but I'll note that so let's call that one machine number three I love the font you know this sort of futuristic font here Futura electronic very futuristic looking and I like it it's like something out of I don't know Blade Runner or something like that you know some sort of sci-fi looking thing you know 2001 Space Odyssey or something like that I uh, like this here this came from the Futura the Machine 3 electronic they've changed this here see routine servicing of your Singer sewing or knitting machine is free of charge for six months from date of purchase I've changed that to 12 and signed this here and here we go model number 2002 purchase date 30th of the 12th 1982 okay so 
day before New Year's Eve 1982. Nelson Sewing Centre Limited. So Nelson is a small town not far from where I am. It's about 45 minutes drive and Singer had a shop there. And in fact, uh, in the 1990s, I used to do their servicing for that shop in Nelson. Yeah, I like finding things like that, especially when they're local like that. Yeah. Okay, similar looking case to the last one. Oh yeah, it's another 2002 model. Foot controller. I will use this foot controller just to test it quickly. I mean, if it blows a capacitor, it's not a huge deal. Oh, it's actually looking in pretty good condition on the front bezel here. Sorry about the reflection. There you go. That's a bit easy to see. On this front bezel here, it looks like it's not had a lot of use. You know, you can see on some of them they've got quite a bit of wear in these areas here. So it's quite nice to see one in good condition, although it's, it's grubby. Okay, the needle's not engaged. Yeah, buttons, buttons not responding. None of them. Yeah, so that could be an electronic issue. Connection issue or something like that. And that in that case, you know, because we can't select the straight stitch here, it's not going to engage the needle bar properly. Yeah. Uh, oh well, that's that's something though. You know, it's quite nice to have a couple of machines the same model. At least you can work on making a good one out of two. Then uh, that's that's quite good. You might be able to hear the hook on the bobbin case here. Very noisy. Uh, often all it takes is a drop of oil there. Huge difference, eh? Huge difference. It's a really important point to oil there. Okay, oh well, uh, so that's machine four. Let's try resetting it. No, nothing. Oh, yep, look, good hard press. Yeah, that. so those buttons might just need cleaning. I wonder if that's just a really common fault. Here we go. You can see it, look, it's been sitting in the sun. Look at the hand wheel here. It's very yellow there, but you turn it around, you can see it. Yeah, see that? <laughs> Definitely been sitting in the sun. And the case is yellowed a little bit as well. That's, that's just the fire retardant they put in the plastics back then. I think it's called bromide. You can reverse the yellowing actually with a process called retro brighting. They do a lot on uh, retro computers and whatnot just to bring that sort of beigey color uh, of the original computer back, you know, to the original color where they've yellowed like this here. It's a hydrogen per peroxide treatment. And um, I do uh, also collect and restore old computers. So. Uh, but that's something that I've not done. I tend to just leave my computers and my sewing machines kind of as, as I find them. I, I'm not 100% convinced that the retro bright process doesn't sort of affect, you know, the plastics in the long term. So I tend to just leave them alone at this stage. But yeah, you can see it's quite yellowed on the back here. Model 2002 again. Oh, this is a Japanese one. Ah, so the 2002s are made in Japan. Oh, well, that's interesting. And the, the 1000 and the 1100 made in West Germany. Ah, okay. Well, I'm learning stuff, you know. I say, I, you know, I don't know everything about every machine. I just sort of uh, get out and get in and uh, learn stuff as I go. This is another Japanese made machine, I think, by the look of it. Let's get this off here. What have we got? Oh yeah, we've got the Futura manual here. Handy. Yep, 2002 electronic. And yeah, the original little accessory case here. 
some bits and pieces very nice and what have we got here bobbins and thread yeah okay okay here we go another 2002 yep no foot controller with this one here we have another guarantee this one's not been trimmed and what have we got six months free servicing hasn't been changed to 12 31st of the 1st 1983 so only a month after that other one was it singer dealer Timaru yeah Timaru say a uh, city in the South Island of New Zealand okay oh well yeah so they were selling these early 80s hey let's see if this oh yeah geez sorry about all the grime and dust I'll clean that off later once I work out what I'm doing all right here we go we've got life oh this is something's not right here this has been oh this yeah look that there this has all been pushed forward something's it's pushed all this forward here's a comparison with the uh, that's machine one there the first one we looked at the to get the lid off you push this down and then slide the lid to the right if you're looking from the front of the machine like that and the lid will just pop off like that and then just to put it back on just sit it on there and slide it to the left there but you can see that this one you can actually see the guts of the machine there so I don't know maybe someone hasn't put the lid on properly or it's been dropped or not sure but let's see yeah okay bit of brute force there the front yeah this front panel has been pushed out here that's all right in the meantime just for testing anyway let's put that lid back on is it damaged might be a little bit damaged oh yeah just slide that on there hopefully I'll be able to fix that there I'll just remove the bobbin there so we don't get any tangles okay got power cobwebs yep good hard press again really good hard press not ideal but yeah okay I'd say probably a contender for doing up that one just sort this here out and it's probably going to make a good machine with a bit of cleaning <laughs> quite a bit of cleaning all right oh that's good that's machine number five this is probably another 1000 or 1100 and there's a note actually on this lid to say no go and no foot controller and it looks like it's had quite a bit of wear so I've probably assessed this machine at some stage very quickly quite a bit of wear down here so it's been well used this machine so the label mentions no go but in what respect let's have a wee look Now we had something but low speed but I reset this hang on what do we got that's max oh it's going oh yeah buttons responding there ah so it's going no bobbin case bobbin case is missing but yeah I mean probably good for parts Ooh. That might, that might be the motor belt slipping is it yeah that's that feels like motor belt slipping there so yeah I might use this machine here to see you know get in closer and you can see yeah that this plugs directly into the motor whoops and you can see this here moving that's the 
belt slipping on the toothed belt and probably just moving the motor there. Say the motor mounts are gone on this one. That is model number 1000. So I would sort of earmark that for a parts donor. Sands dirt, quite handy. It's been well used. You can tell by the the wear on these buttons beside the buttons on the front fascia panel here and definitely you know this and you know, this here you know the paint's been worn off there but you know a really good uh, little parts donor I would say you know this is a sort of machine here that I'll use to you know just work on what it takes to get into these this panel here and you know maybe clean the button contacts and you know as I say the motor and work out how all that is uh, attached and mounted things like that so pretty handy to have so i'll call that machine number six okay this one looks like a german model uh, so i've got a note on this one says electronic issue foot controller blown capacitor goes clean electronics and try so probably referring to cleaning the uh, buttons contacts here so i won't plug in that foot controller yeah it's cracked actually yeah, so I, I wouldn't use a foot controller like that because all it takes is for that just to, you know, this top lid piece here to break off and that exposes live contacts right under your foot there. So that's uh, probably only good for parts, that controller. Just remove that bulb in there. And what have we got? Power. Yep, light goes good hard press again and bingo yep looks okay the oil here yeah it's a bit noisy yeah but yeah good a good runner I would say Yeah, not sure whether the reverse button is working. Yeah, doesn't seem to be. So yeah, that could be a showstopper if the reverse doesn't work. Um, zigzag, zigzag. Yeah, zigzag doesn't seem to be working either. I probably should have checked that on the other machines. We've got the width, width is set right up here. This is the width selector. And that's your stitch length here and that's your buttonhole balance and your uh, you know stretch stitch balance there reverses here oh yeah that's reversing yep yep that's working okay and that is model number 1000 again so that's machine number seven. So I've got my little list here. So we've got three, we've got three model 1000s, one model 1100 and three model 2002s. So I thought I'd, you know, just leave it at that at this stage. Um, but yeah, definitely, obviously, you know, keep an eye out for more videos. I'll go through and show you some of the uh, bits and pieces that I go through to uh, potentially troubleshoot or get these machines going although it looks like they're all in fairly good working condition I would say the only thing I can really see is you know on one of the machines the the belt was slipping you know so maybe we'll go through belt tension uh, the other thing I'd like to go through is see if I can uh, get these buttons to be a little bit more responsive and um, so that apart from that I can't really see any uh, major issues with those other machines in fact, I think probably just about all of them will go to, to a point. Yeah, I hope you, you found that uh, interesting and helpful. Thanks very much for watching. And thank you as always to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your support. And we'll see you in the next video. More than likely it will be on one of these Singer Futuras. Catch you then.